Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Are you ready to write some code with me today? Maybe. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on the weather, right? All right. No, uh, weather. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah. Didn't, we didn't have much summer this year, did we? <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. All right. Let's 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 pick up where we left off. You know, we basically agreed we're gonna be able to kind of build a uh, O tokens. I think. I think uh, Paul created a pull request. Let's go take a uh, take a look at a Paul's pull request just to see, you know, what things are like, and we will go and talk about a little bit about you know building the O token, which is the O data O data tokens. So okay, so here is his pull request projections. That's a bad name right there, Code Rub and um uh, rename o token to token all right okay let's see what happened here let's take a look at the code real quick and see what we have here um all right okay so these are the tokens they all became token type and now this is just taking, making that change. So this is from O token to token, tokenization service, and then a whole bunch of code in here to just take away the O token. Okay, so that's all he did. He just did, took the O token and he added it in there um, for a cross hole. Okay, all right. Thank you, Paul, for doing that. That's that's pretty cool. Okay, let me let me merge this. Let's go back here. Let's look at the build status. All right, cool. Let's let me pull latest here and let's start building the actual O token for O data service. So this is um, let's see. Uh, this is the here's Visual Studio. Let me sync up real quick. What up, Joe? How you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you guys? I'm doing fantabulously fantabulous. All right. Uh, let's see. So, okay. So, let's create a new branch and let's start building the OData service. So, this is uh, users, Hassan, Habib, um, foundations, OData service. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit just so people can see what I'm doing. And uh, let's start from the models, right? So let me. So, okay. So, uh, Paul, Paul changed the model name, but he didn't change the, uh, the folder name. Okay. Great. Okay. Let me change this to tokens real quick. Tokens. There is an existing folder in here called tokens and our let's see. Um rename tokens. Access to path, whatever is denied. What's that? Why is that? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, let me open the file explorer of this guy. And O tokens rename. Don't you guys just love the um, the Windows Seven um, context menu? It's the best. It's the best thing ever. Best thing ever made. Windows Seven or Windows Eleven. Eleven, yeah. <laughs> I was like, they they like took it in eleven and like hid the system one. Which I guess the new one's the system one now, but mm, 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 mm. I can't even imagine what kind of hoops they jump through to keep 
keep everything working right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. I know working with the system menus is not fun. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. So. So whatever there is O tokens, I just want to replace it. So I'm gonna go out here and say anything where it says O token match case. Replace that with token. So replace all. See how many we can catch. Don't you want to have it tokens pluralized? Because that's your folder structure. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But now you renamed it to token, so. That's all right. I can okay. I can always revert thanks to source control. I can always revert. Okay, and um, so I don't need this O token here anymore. I can just rebuild real quick just to make sure things are still functional. Certainly not. Give me a second. Let's see. Yeah. Reset. Hard. Here we go. And delete this. And rebuild the solution. Okay. Now, uh, let me find everywhere where it says O tokens and replace that with tokens. Place all. 12 instances. Great. Now, can I build and run normally? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so, so that's first step. So that's basically, okay. So this is code rob. Rename all namespaces from O tokens to tokens. Okay, so that's one part. And then also I discovered that this here, this name here is not correct because should, this should be said so dot models dot tokens, right? Uh, and that will break some things, and that's okay because yeah. we have to stay consistent, right? So While still... you're over there, you got to rename that folder one more time. Yeah, I will. I will. So now let me just find the stuff that broke. There should be plenty of these. Um, that's not a real error. Uh, tokenization service. Yeah, token now is missing. See, by the way, Visual Studio can only show you a handful of um, of errors, you know, like it, it doesn't show you all the errors. It, it has a limit. And after that limit, it'll be like, well, there's over 999 errors that are there. The tired note could not be found. Uh, let's see, uh, tokens. Did I also change? Okay, let's see, using OData Neo Core um uh, uh services dot foundations dot tokenizations and now where this is coming from just the models dot tokens it, it it's it's the either the interface or the implementing class needs the using statement yeah it, it, the the issue is probably not in this source file. If you if you go to definition and tokenize, that's oh. where you got to fix it. You mean here? No, oh, the actual yeah, tokenized yeah. method. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it wow. doesn't know about token yet. Oh wow. Okay, I don't know they do that now. That's interesting. Okay, okay. Well, because that that method's not compiled yet. It it has no idea what to do with what's coming out of it. Right. Go back here. Tokenize. This, this is this new because in the past I know this didn't happen in the past but let's see what is this tokenize cannot convert lambda expression to intended delegate type because some of the return types in the block it, it's token uh, again see see the definition it the return type so if you go to oh no that should no, be fine this is different oh it's your that, try catch Unless that I, uh, yeah, it might be the try catch. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there it is. Um, also that that method, O tokenize. We should probably rename that and validate O token query. That should now be a token query. Hang on. 
it, this is too complex. It needs to be simplified, but that's a story for another day. How long is this guy here? That um, is the simplified version. <laughs> oh, it needs to be even simpler. Yeah. Even simpler than that. Uh, how long is this guy here? I'm poor. Still kind of weird looking. Let me break. It's not even used, is it? Uh, apparently not. Wow. I Same with the last method there yep. is not used. Apparently today is the cleanup day. <laughs> Any day is good for a cleanup day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I agree. Okay, what else is missing? This is system void. That's not the real issue. Uh, there is a place where it's asking for token type. Yeah, yeah here you go. Let's do that. Wait, I think it pulled the wrong thing. <laughs> it's pulling it's pulling some library called mono Cecil something or other. Okay, let me go here. Token type. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> mono it, uh, will most likely have an expression parser in it, and token type is probably a type that, oh, that that's exposes. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Let me clean that up. A couple of more. Let's see. List is defined. That's not a real error. Um, value type. You broke it real good. Yeah, that's and that, that's totally okay. There it is. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> that probably covered a few of those. Yeah, and then object doesn't contain. No, oh, that's not a real error either. Uh, Namespace list. Yeah, this this here. I don't know what happened in here in my build project that's Clean. making it freak out. Clean and but... rebuild. Okay, I'll do that. So reload. Clean. Rebuild. I thought rebuild is clean and build. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah, okay. I... At one point in time, I cared to know what the difference was. I just get better results if I do them as separate operations. Okay. And if that doesn't work, sometimes you actually have to go delete your object folder if you're being a nut job and have things <laughs> that break that. <laughs> okay. Let me just run the test here real quick just to make sure things are happy. Ooh. Okay. I uh, should throw service exception. Tokenization. Let's see here. So uh, while Hassan's doing this, uh, are you guys uh, interested in the numeric stuff that just came out yesterday? Which part? Um, the fact that you can do generic math. It's got a lot of caveats, though. I watched a good chunk of that. That was a long uh, video that the, uh, what was it, community stand-up or something? But... So I have to be big about this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw my stance, but I told everyone I'm not gonna do, um, um, uh, I told everyone that I I don't recommend using targeted types. You know what I mean by that? Like anybody that would go in and say. You know, a, 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 I don't know, a string x equal new like this. I said, don't do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that particular notation very much. Um, and if it does ever get used, it's it's got to be the right usage. There's not many usages where I'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely prefer var. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Eagle has a got a couple of good Eagle Eagle Hanson. He has a couple of good ideas there, but no, I uh, nope. Uh, this just <laughs> this just goes to say, let me do this code, Rob. Thanks, Paul. I did I did the thing that I asked you to do. This is this is it. If you're watching, so okay, rename <laughs> rename uh, O token 
do token. Um, so, so what was I saying? I, this just goes to say that we're not really running after every shiny new thing, right? You have to kind of process it and see whether it makes sense or not. Like, I am a big, big fan of the new kind of... Uh, let, let me show you what my team did the other day. Uh, we ran into this situation where... Okay, the mixed reality team, they're building a, a system called DMX, Devices Management Experiences. And what this system does, it just goes and sees everything that we have in the lab, all our HoloLens devices, everything else. And it gives me a status report and helps me kind of self-heal and stuff like that. Something that I was working on uh, with my team, I named them the Outer Space Apes because it's funny. And um, Apes stands for Applied Engineering Solutions, not what you think. And uh, <laughs> and here's here's one here that I re I'm really proud of. This is like this is why I, like I tell people standardize. If you look at the um, let's see here, not these views. If you look at the services, uh, lab view services, and then under the lab service, there is this little match. This is you measuring the uh, the battery level in in the device in the Hololens device. Look at this comparison. You're basically going and saying if it's bigger than, bigger than or equal, and then so on and so forth, right? So this stuff is new. That's pattern matching. Love it, right? If you come and tell me, no, go and do this new targeted annotation BS, I'm going to be like, no, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, it kind of insane to me, so I'm not going to do that. You know, it kind of helps you kind of see you know, things from a different perspective. Like, just because Sam and I are Microsoft employees, just because we love .NET, it doesn't mean that we're going to go and adapt every new thing, you know, comes out of the box. Right, Sam? So, anyway, uh, rename O token to token. And here is my... Yep, Sam, Sam shut down his camera because <laughs> his manager <laughs> his manager is coming after him now. <laughs> um, um... Eating my breakfast. No worries, brother. No worries. You should see me chewing on my food on live sessions with no shame whatsoever. Sam has yeah. class. Sam has I a lost a lot of my shame a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> it just fell right off. It just it just fell right off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that basically should take care of it. Oh, while we're at it, apparently it renamed, it kind of moved things under system. I didn't know that was there as well. Okay. That's so, an optional thing. Yep. Oh, uh, 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 code wrap, uh, rename O tokens to tokens. Okay. Oh, why did it make a draftable request? Ready for review. I think it, the setting in GitHub remembers the last time you did it. So you probably made a draft. Mm. Okay, let's take a quick look at it. I always like to review my own pull requests first, take a first pass at it. Because sometimes nobody's going to review your code like you do yours. Like you're nobody. Okay, I, I'm not surprised that the large um number of files because we renamed everything and again that goes to say again the new concept rewritable software right you know this is wait why did it throw away because you're not using those namespaces where's string coming from is it now native not from the with the system directive i guess it is it's a keyword to c sharp isn't it um well do you have implicit usings turned on nope. that I, better, I, I better not that's another thing that i'm saying no 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 to you well know? That, that that might be something you want to go look because systems should be there right let's see let's see so in here edit uh file Implicit is disabled. What about this one here? Oh. <laughs> so now you should have a an error now. Oh yeah, it'll freak oh, out. Right. Okay. So it's... so since you do you want these set up across the board, you should probably add a depths file or a um um. So basically, Visual Studio will take the uh like a project config. And then uh, overlay it on the other ones, which you can you can do these attributes in there, or these aren't attributes; these are nodes. 
but you can turn these things on and off at a solution level. Okay. Okay, so this guy is done here. Mm -hmm. About the rest. Hi, Tuta. Hi, Lula. Hey. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like you, Joe. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Oh, where is uh, where is the emo toy? Oh, I don't have it here. I was playing with this emo toy this morning. I should show it to her. It's really hilarious. All right. So that's cleaned up. Let's go back here. Code Rob. Disable implicit implicit usings. Here we go. Uh -huh. Okay, that's okay. So now that pull request should be in good shape. Let's go back here. Here we go. Share screen. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh, my own pull request. That's right. Go back here. Pull request tokens. And then let's take another look. Just one more look. Once more unto the breach, dear friends. Okay. Okay, I'm glad we did this practice because we removed a lot of garbage. I don't know how I allowed this to happen. But here we are. Okay. That's great. Let's merge this thing. You've been slacking. I've been slacking. That's right. Confirm merge. Okay. All right. With that being said, you know, let's let's get started with the actual O token. Okay. So let's go back here. There's this guy. Uh, let me let me fix this real quick. Let's go to OData Neo and let's create a new branch. Okay, should we call it an O token service or O data service? I think we're getting into O data. Basically, from this point on, you won't have tokens anymore. Down, down whatever pipe we go down. Okay, then. Let me, um, okay, let's go into, uh, okay, let's start from the model. It's, oh, I forgot to, ah, forgot to rename the damn thing, tokens. And it won't let me until I, um, it doesn't let me change it from Visual Studio for some reason. Maybe I need to run in admin mode or something. What do you got to change? the name of the folder from O tokens to tokens. Oh, you can unload it, rename it, and then reload. You have to just browse back to the new path. Or but just... You, but hmm. hasn't you had a pull request to change the na uh, folder name? It, it wasn't changing the folder name. It changed the uh, the, the namespace. But space? I forgot, yeah, but I forgot to change the folder name. On disk. I'm not a very smart guy. But I want you to know that. <laughs> There's a lot of things to keep tabs of. It just sometimes, sometimes code makes sense to me. <laughs> it's sometimes. Okay, let's let's put the let's put that back in. Here is Odata. Yeah, see now it's seeing these tokens as an entirely new addition. Let's see, maybe I'll make a special pull request for it. Let's make a special pull request for it and start clean from the top. Okay, uh, all right. Okay, so why, why is this 12 changes? Because, oh, because it removed six and added six, okay. Cool, here's a new pull request. Um, where is the screen? There it is. Users, Hassan, Habib, Code, Rob, 
rename folder to tokens. Okay. Menu, code drop, rename folder to tokens. Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, let's see. Odata Neo. Create a compare. Create pull request. And this is me removing files and adding files. Great. Let's fix that. Let's see. Ready for review. Merge. Okay. Let's go back to the code. Getting better and better. The if you're if you're hearing notifications in Discord, that's because I hooked up our our uh, GitHub standard compliant GitHub repos with an action to kind of scan that information and all that. So it's not someone yelling at us. It's just just me changing things. Oh, it's going to the general work pull request rather than the OData Neo pull requests. Oh, did, did Tim make one specifically for OData? Oh, he did. Okay, I'll change that. Then. I mean, it doesn't need to go there, but just, just so that you're aware. Okay. I don't care where it goes. I, <laughs> the idea, it goes somewhere. Yeah, the, the, the ideal scenario was me going and saying... Um, Anything that's standard compliant, um, just go and review it because you'll be able to because it's all playing by the same rules, right? But yeah. um, but anyway, let's let me create a new um, a new branch here. So this is users uh, Hassan Habib Foundations O Data and then uh, process. Okay, okay, so. We need a new model. So this new model is going to be called, here's a new folder. It's going to be called O tokens or O data then. O data as, uh, that's weird. O tokens. And then uh, I'm going to create a model here that's called an O token. And this O token, like we said last time, it's going to have a listed tokens within it, right? So that's public. Here is your, um, so the O token is going to have a type. It could be a root. That's the bottom of everything. And then start from the top, start building everything from the top. Um, okay. Let's do it this way. We can, we can do this. Um, okay. So prop, a uh, string raw data, prop, uh, O token type. And then we also want a prop list of O token. We're going to call children. Should we call them childs? <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's an enum. Here's a public enum. Here's some copyrights. Control K E. And okay, so we have root, and we said we're going to have a select. The type is select, and we're going to have type that's called property, and we said we're going to have type that is um, um, binary operator. Equals, right? Do, do, we, do we know um, the example we're pushing through the system? Because we can just look yeah. at that example and then fill the pop types in here based this off guy, of this guy here so you got your select your property yeah what's the comma separator i will say comma what else uh i think that's it <clears throat> that's that's our horizontal feature right there and then uh back to this guy so you have the raw data raw value raw value Right, and you have my property, and you have children. 
and also a part of this type that's going to be passed in so you're going to have like an influx like a whole bunch of the orchestration service is going to receive an array of projected tokens and it's going to give you its own version of that it's basically going to go and say here's a bunch of projected tokens you do whatever you want with them i will just give you the initial mapping between these projected tokens and the o tokens right so my expectation is that the here i'm gonna go here and say okay let me just say type here okay and i'm gonna go here and say uh um this type because because think about this you're getting this projected token here and this projected token has the projected type in it right which can be uh an identified keyword assignment property space equals and comma you know and we're supposed to kind of work with that right here's here's an idea that i have i think i think these these exact same type are not too bad types are not too bad i think the the difference here is that the the o data service or o token service will basically go and say um here is a more focused result or tokens outside of this right so instead of keyword it's going to say no this is a select statement and inside that select statement there are all these children you know so it's basically building out you know that kind of structure for us okay and if that's the case then we can probably let's see here So I could use all of these except for except that I still need root keyword. I want select and I don't want so assignment. I think assignment is okay. And then property space equals comma. I don't know if the O token service cares about spaces. Sam, does a space mean anything in O data at all? I don't think it does. Yeah, we don't care about that. Yeah, don't care about that. Okay, I think I have what I need here. <clears throat> and who care about the comma? Yeah, that doesn't really. That's only used for some textual representation of multiple things. So o data cares, right? Because you go and say select name age. O data but, doesn't care. But name but, age belong to select O yes. node. And the name age are children of select. Who care about the comma? So yeah, it doesn't so care about the comma, that's right. We basically converted the comma into separate objects. So there, right. there's a natural separation, whereas we need the comma and the string to separate them. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So we're going to get in a bunch of O tokens with, with unidentified values. And what the... What the... And Get rid of the assignment. You don't want to, yeah, we don't care about the assignment too, right? That's right. Yeah, um, and uh, let's uh, keep the example um, below the class, right? Equals will probably go away as well, because that's also a separator used for the, um, yeah. the, mm. tech, the, tech, the uh, string representation. <laughs> We're going to have that as a key value pair or whatever the parent note uh, type is. Okay. And at uh, uh, dollar select, dollar filter after dollar select, right? <laughs> yeah, that that we don't have we don't have a, um, a horizontal. We haven't the, yeah, we haven't done that with filter yet. Selects our first one when it's we do filter. We'll add it. Yeah. For now, it's just select. <laughs> we will add. It's rewritable, right? We can go back and rewrite it. Uh -huh. So one thing that I'm thinking of right now, when we get into making this more modular and allowing people to 
have their own custom keywords through some form of plugin system, this in Noom will limit us in mm-hmm. that regard because you won't be able to match something you don't know about yet. We're going to need so we'll, to think. We'll come up with that later, I guess. We're going to need to think of a way to expand this. Let's just get something out the door. Okay. Still in a certain way, but we need to get something out the door. Um, okay. So what is this O token? This O token also will have a projected type. Let's go here. Projected token type. What did we call it? Projected type. We we might want to just make sure all of our stuffs kind of follow somewhat of a similar naming pattern. So so this is we could call this token type. Uh, no, sorry, uh, what did we call this one here? Token type. Yeah. So this is token type. This is projected type. This is O token type. We should probably call this projected token type. Yeah, that would that would match a little better. Yeah. There you go. Good, good catch. Okay, so so here's the deal. Um, orchestration service is going to pick up a bunch of projected tokens. It's going to give you what it knows. This is going to be null. This is going to be unidentified. And this is going to be whatever inside that guy. And the O token service is going to pick up that uh, unidentified O token object. And it's going to restructure it and turn it into something that makes sense. Right. The order here is really, really important, as you guys might imagine. Right. O token service main responsibility is to drop the things it doesn't care about and start processing the things it cares about. So let's do that. This is this is really fun. Let's write a service. Let's see if we have just enough about enough time to do this. O tokens. I need, I need a better name for this. O tokenization. O tokenizations. So this would be I O token service. And this will be O token service. I try to just stay true to the same model name O token service. This is projection. This is tokenization. We might need to kind of fix our services names in here. This should be I projected, I projected token service or something like that. Yeah, oh. probably. Yeah. Okay. Here is this guy. There is public, <laughs> and then we are producing an an array of O tokens from the other side. We're very close, you guys. Very, very close. The crazy part is when we take this O tokens. So, so Joe, O tokens are going to be the language that we translate the expressions and SQL commands and O data strings and everything else. This is going to be that common model, right? So, so Sam, this O token is where everything else comes from the other side, basically. And then the opposite of that which is going to be very interesting. Somehow we need to read a an expression and turn it into O tokens. Like that's the, the duplex. That's the other way. Right. And if we can do that, oh, my holy God, this is going to be amazing, you know, but we'll see. OK, so so this is uh, O tokenize. And it takes in an array of unidentified O tokens. There's a bunch of O tokens. And it's yeah. going to go and do some work with that. Make it to make Take it happen. Take an array and out of the array. And it's the same, same type. Yeah, but this guy is unidentified. I, unidentified, this guy is unidentified and structured. So it'll do two per two things. It'll identify them and and nest them if needed, taking them out of the the root. 
we we can't we can't have a service deal with two models like this sam that becomes becomes entanglement that becomes very entangled work or coupled work yeah not without duplicating that contract and mapping between them no okay. you don't like it not convinced okay it Talk. looks weird to me and uh, um so this is the first point the second point is um the uh, uh return type so why is return uh auto array since we have a uh, root you just return so one token. root node and other things are the children of the root that's right that's so we just return one token it's a root node it's a root of the tree everything belongs a tree belongs a root of the tree okay so now i i i i try to understand your logic that's my yeah. so let me concern. let me explain to you my logic so so let's say you're making a you're making a a a pie right when you are putting the pie in the oven you're sending something but the oven will send you back the same thing but in a different state that's my logic so you're putting the dough and the contents of the pie in the oven the oven cooks it and then give it back to i you. want to challenge you challenge. <laughs> the pie before go to the oven you call it a pie we call it a non-cooked pie <laughs> yeah, we can't say it's a pie because we can't we can't eat it. What do you call it? A raw pie. Raw pie. <laughs> the material. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you I'll give you a better example. You know, mm -hmm. when I was young, I would go and try to take some of the my mom. My mom would make this thing where you wrap a cabbage leaf with with rice inside of it, right? And this cabbage leaf with rice inside of it, she would still call it mashi. That's the name of it, mashi. But when I try to eat it, she said, oh, it's not ready yet. We need to put it in the oven. So it's exactly the same thing. You're sending something and your service is changing its state and then you're getting the same thing back. This goes back to two principles, something called pure contract. Your service shouldn't be dealing with multiple contract on the outside. But on the inside, that's okay. Like internally, that's okay. So the right now, the argument here, I think, as far as Sam's concerned, is the preference for mutability. Like you're mm -hmm. passing. Well, in this case, you're getting a, a new O token out the end, most likely. Um, but yeah, if you pass in an array of O token, some people would expect that that particular array doesn't get modified at all. It just seems uh, you, we, the auto lies is a machine. It takes the input and the machine and output. Mm -hmm. So now you take the same type of input and output. Um, it, it looks weird to me, but I'm okay. So let's move on and we can change it later. I try to understand your, your thoughts in your Let mind. Me since we have just 10 minutes i want to press on this just so we are um it's it's important to me that we stay on the same page sam did i ever tell you about the standard the standard ever heard of it yes oh. every time okay, every <laughs> single time every day right <laughs> So what I what I basically say is that broker neighbors are not allowed to combine multiple primitive. No, that's not it. Even you know there is pure contracts, physical, physical contracts, pure dependency contracts, single contracts. And what I'm basically saying is that you know um, services are supposed to only deal with one contract at all times. The reason for that is if you start dealing with multiple contracts, you start creating what I call entanglement. Let me just show you here what that means. Entanglement is when you go and say, you'll see a lot of people do this in their software, and that's why software becomes unmaintainable. They create that shared model, and then they start having multiple services looking at that exact same model. 
the software becomes almost unmaintainable. Why is that? Because you didn't really separate the services. Even when we say that we conceptually separated the concern, we really didn't, right? The rule here is that, oh, go ahead, go ahead. The shared model here is just for query. Once the shared model built, it's never be changed. And if it does change, it breaks everything. So it becomes an yes, entanglement yes. problem. So right. now we take the auto array and try to do something for that array and return the array again. Yes. Um, it, it could be confusing. I have the auto token array. Well, I have that. Why do we have another machine to to do something for that and get the same array again? Because because you put the paper in the printer and the same paper comes back out with a different state. It's the same contract. When you try to print something, you put a paper in the printer and then you take the same paper back, yes? True, but you have, it's you have like... of ink. The ink is just data, but it still confirms to that contract. Yeah, it sounds like um, a, lo a, a, a lot of rule, a, yes. a, a step to apply to uh, material. Yeah. Um, so think about the um, oven, think about the, the printer, right? Tell me about an example where you use any machine in your day life where you put an apple and get an orange. It doesn't happen, except in the software world, and that's why our software is broken. All right? The same thing can transform, but it doesn't fundamentally change. Like if I put in a student and get back a teacher, that's insanity. That's how the soft, that's how a lot of software is being written today. It's wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> you know, just think with me about an example in life where you put something and get from the other side something completely fundamentally different. Somehow in the software world, this makes sense to some engineers. It doesn't make any damn sense to me. So, Brandy Amigo, <laughs> you understand? Uh, no? Okay. What about 3D printers? You're putting plastic material and it transforms its shape. It's the same thing. Nobody does this craziness of pushing one contract and getting from the other side another. Only software. But the 3D is printer. We kind of call the the input material is a uh, is a is a model, huh. but yes. output is a is a model. Is it the same material? The same thing? Same same material, but different format. Yeah, you're you're focusing on the detail rather than the context. Yeah. So that like take take baking, right? You put flour, yeah. you put water, you put other stuff in one end, and you get a cookie yeah. out the other fundamentally it's the same material yeah, yeah. but entirely you're not going to go pounding all those ingredients in your mouth and 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 by the way i am okay with using primitive types as input and producing a model from the output i'm okay with that as long as they're primitive types right i'm okay with that but if you put in a car and get a bus from the other side i'm gonna be like nope you can package up those primitive types into say a request object see that's mm, yeah that's that's a, that's a slippery slope joe so i mean that that's basically a a bucket that you put all your ingredients in just to make it easier to transport yeah so as long as but then you you have to keep that dependency model local to that contract so to me any service has it's full contract, which is its signature, and the inputs and the outputs are the full contract. There's a reason why interfaces just don't deal with your parameters. They yeah. deal with what you result with as well. So 
as long as those inputs and outputs are localized to that service and nobody else can use those for their own processing, they're basically just translate a translation layer for them. You take your model and make it ad adapt to theirs and you're basically managing your dependencies at that point. I, I'm okay with that logic. There it is. I found it. Same or primitive <laughs> IO model. For so, all services, they have to maintain a single contract in terms of their return and input types. Sam, if you do this in anything you write in terms of software, I promise you the maintainability of the system will increase dramatically. And when I say maintainability, I don't just talk about you coming back to continue to support the system, but people who never touch the system coming in to actually support a system they've never built. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did we at least settle on the model? The one thing that Joe brought up, which I want to run by you, Sam, I'm okay with having an array of something and returning one thing that's totally acceptable by me because it's still the same contract. My question here is that's Sam, that's what we know today that we have a root token. But what if someone is sending you a bunch of queries, like a batch request, and you want to get you back? Have a root. Do you? you actually... I I would say you'd have one root, and each each in each item in that batch would be the next level. Um, so you basically you would just add another level to this. then you're forcing us to kind of introduce a new model, a new type in here. And this type would be sub root, which I'm not okay with. Why? Because, because these are a bunch of queries that are meant to fan out. It's going to fan out to a bunch of services. Hmm? It doesn't have to come back the same. Like, let me just do a refresher on, uh, on the batch. The batching, the batching and all data, you know. Batch, eight... batch request is a, um, huh. a set of a single individual request. Are they set in one individual request? Yeah, batch is not. A... Look. Yeah, so it's a, a single request combined together. So you're the saying it still has a root. Yeah, but for the badge request itself, because dollar badge doesn't can be query option. Okay. But for each sub request, it's okay. It's a it's a it's a request again. So request can come in. It's another old token. It's always one token. Because gonna for have... request, it can have a. Multiple collaboration, for example, we can have dollar select, dollar expand, dollar sell, filter together. But for one request, there's a one audit root token. Then we're going to have to introduce sub, sub root then. Sub -root, um, what's the goal of sub root? Okay. Can you have dollar sign select and and dollar sign select again in O data at the same level? You can't. You can't. So our O token is going to validate against that. If you're having multiple requests that are select requests for different endpoints, and you're basically going and saying, oh, for each one of different endpoints? For different endpoints because it's batch request. It's okay. I think batch would be handled at more as like an orchestration on top of. Oh, that's doing right. That. Oh. Yeah. That's because if you, if you looked at the the query string for batch it, it's basically its own endpoint i'm okay with returning just o token if you guys feel but remember you know build the library for things that you can't even think of right like the, this year is us programming ourselves in a corner just giving <laughs> you the heads up i'm, okay. I'm okay so let's keep uh, it's a return area of token and i'd, I'd like to see the concrete implementation of OI token service for all token. Okay, okay. Joe.
how do you feel about that um i i think we're right yeah I, that's great um if we continue the way we're going without much speculation on like what we could do with it um so far i don't i haven't heard any argument that would prevent us just to keep going this route okay so. but i keep my words for the input and output for the auto lies interface so maybe we can rethink about it what we want to build for this service yeah like the only the only thing i have right now is technically it's not an o token coming out of here just because the tokens are meant to be like a linear flat thing and now we're getting into like a, a nested structure but we we can change that later if we feel like it we're good at renaming things at this point yeah renaming sounds uh just a couple minutes task yeah, <laughs> we can uh, we can involve Paul again to help us to rename it. We'll get yeah. we'll get we'll get Paul <laughs> something to do. <laughs> well, I, I think we need to make a test right now for that example that you had written. So the the select uh, name and select value or whatever. That's hilarious. <laughs> There's a reason why he hasn't been coming on lately. Yeah, no, Paul, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> okay listen guys i will keep it at o token for now you know until our next session we're at time mm -hmm. but uh let me put a draft pr here so this is foundations uh o tokenize service uh or token service um um o tokenize i think you re need to remove one line from your o token type as well you added Which, it in as a as a uh, where is it projected o token type or o token type one of those so I think this o, o token type go to definition on that or implementation or whatever okay sub root, sub -root we don't need at the moment yeah now we're happy okay i'm pushing this and creating a a a a draft uh in progress pr um I think I think we're going in a good direction here. I have a good feeling about this. You know, there's there's more than just code into this, you guys. There's strategy that is at play here. I hope you can see that. You know, it's it's really important that you start realizing, oh wait, we were digging into vertical blades and now we're breaking horizontally. What does that mean for us and and for software engineers in general? And that's the part that I really care about the most you know, when it comes to patterns and strategies in delivering software, you know, at this point in, in time in my life. But uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later, okay? <laughs> I appreciate you all. Okay, take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye.